Hey everybody, I think we're all going to say that this summer is probably going to be one of the most interesting summers that most of us live through. However, that doesn't mean that there aren't good books to read. So I thought with half of the summer over, I would recommend to you six books to finish your summer reading with. Let's get started. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you all doing? I hope you guys are doing very, very well. And I hope, of course, you are safe. I hope you are healthy. I hope you're reading. I hope you're cool. It is so warm here in Northern California. My air conditioner is on. All the windows are shut, but I really can't complain. So today it is Monday afternoon here, Monday the 27th. Today was a big literary literature day because the Booker Prize announced its long list. I cannot ever do a reaction video to the Booker Prize long list because there's always a portion of that list that's either not going to be published here in the U.S., or is not even like coming for ages and they're books that I will not be able to get my hands on. So I do want to give a huge congratulations to Brandon Taylor, who wrote Real Life, um, Pam Zhang, who wrote um, How Much of These Hills is Gold, and Kylie Reed, who wrote Such a Fun Age, because I loved all of those debut novels. I'm so excited to see them on the Booker long list. I hope they all make it to the short list. I really, really do. I doubt it, but I hope, I hope, I hope. So today I thought what I would do is take a moment and just give you guys some recommendations on some fun summer books to end your summer reading. Now, summer, you guys know me. You guys have watched my channel for a while. You do know that I tend to like a book that's a little bit darker, a little bit more on the sad side. Um, but every once in a while, I want to read a book that just sort of makes me feel like summer. And summer is really three things for me. There has to be a sense of family and joy to the book, okay? I also think there always has to be a sense of sort of ease to the writing, to the story, that just makes me really just get lost in it. And finally, it has to have an emotional punch because it wouldn't be me. I don't want my books not to sort of give me that gut punch and usually make me smile or feel good by the end of the book. Now, this is an eclectic list of books and they're all over the place, but they are all 100% worth your time. All six of the ones that I'm gonna talk about are out. You can get your hands on them. And I think that they make perfect books to end the summer with. So get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads. However, you keep track of your TBR. If you are so able, please order these books from your local independent bookstore. If you are a library user, all of these books should be available at your local library because they have all been out for a little bit of time at least. So let's get started. I'm just going in alphabetical order by author. The first book I'm going to tell you about is The Last Book Party by Karen Duk Dukas. This is out now from Henry Holt. I read this, I want to say, last year, and I loved it. And this is the story of a young woman who works for a publishing agency and she sort of passed up for this promotion that really should be hers. So she goes to the Cape Co to Cape Cod, um, to the Cape, to um, spend time with her family and also ex um, accept being this assistant to this very famous writer who is supposedly working on this final book. And him and his wife have a very sort of literary world that they live in in Cape Cod. And every year they put on something called the book party, where people dress up as different characters from the book, different books, and people have to guess who you are. Now, what happens is our main character, Eve, is um, she gets there, she sort of begins a relationship with this writer, and she becomes part of the world that he lives in, in many different facets. And there's a lot of stuff going on. So there's like a good sense of drama, a good sense of gossip. But this book is also a lot about research and writing and the world of publishing in a lot of ways. But in its heart, it's a book about a girl sort of coming of age in her mid-20s about what she's going to do with her life now and just sort of taking a summer to do some 
I'm going to use the word crazy things. Um, I loved it. I was absorbed in it. I read it so fast. I want to say I think I read this book in a day. Absolutely a fun. It would be a great book to read by the pool if you have a pool um, or if you like have just a nice out door seating area. This is a great book for that. So that is The Last Book Party by Karen Dukas. Okay, now I'm going to recommend a romance. I just said that. I'm going to recommend a romance. And I'm going to recommend The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. This is out now from Berkeley. Now, Jasmine, I will say, is a local author. Um, I met her at um, a reading of Jamie Attenberg's um, book, I think. I think that's where I met her. And this is her romance novel. You guys will totally enjoy this premise. So basically we have a young man who has to go to his ex-wife's wedding and he is going to not have a plus one until one day he gets stuck in an elevator with a young woman and decides to ask her to be his plus one to this wedding. I, and I just, okay, so I don't recommend a lot of romance. So sometimes I need the, the help of the back of the book. Um, and it says, agreeing to go to a wedding with a guy she gets stuck with in an elevator is something Alexa Monroe wouldn't normally do. She's definitely not the spontaneous type, but there's something about Drew Nichols that's too hard to resist. Drew is the man who asks her to the wedding. So if you are looking for an apps, you know what, all of her books, just all of her books, all of Jasmine's books. She has a new book that just came out. If you like this one, you will probably like everything she writes. She just got such charm. Um, so yeah, that's The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. My friend um, Joss at Squibble Reads really loved this book at, too. So if you're looking for a secondary recommendation, Joss is phenomenal. And there you go. So you can get your hands on a romance. Russell recommends a romance. There you go. I talked about this book a lot when it came out. Did it come out a couple of years ago now? Let me see. I'm trying to remember. Um... 2017, so three years ago. Gosh, I've been doing booktube for a while, and I loved it. And that's The Keeper of Lost Things by Ruth Hogan. I called this book when I read it an absolute hug for your heart. This is the story of a, a woman who works for a man who basically collects things that he finds, and he's been organizing these things in his house for some time. And she doesn't really realize all that's going on in this room. But what happens is he passes away and he leaves his house and he leaves this collection of lost things to her with sort of this, this um, request that she find the people that these things belong to. And what this does is it allows her to interact with a bunch of different people, tell the story of these objects, which is, a lot of them are so charming, but it also is a story about her sort of finding love and friendship and everything that she needs to be happy moving forward in the world as well. Um, yeah, it's just, this book has so much charm to it. Um, and it, it, it tugs on the heartstrings in all the right ways. This is just a great book to read when you just want to get absorbed in a story that at times will make you smile, at times will make you tear up. And by the end of it, you'll just feel, you'll just feel good. And that is sometimes what you need at the end of the summer. So that's The Keeper of Lost Things by Ruth Hogan. Okay. I couldn't go through a summer reading list without recommending one epic fantasy. And this book came out, what did it come out in February of this year? Yeah. So this is actually the advanced reading copy, so I don't have the cover. The cover actually has this thing on it. And that this is The Unspoken Name by A.K. Larkwood. I loved this first book in this fantasy series and cannot wait for um, the second one to come out. Um, so one, thank you, Tor, for sending me this. I was absorbed in this book so much. So basically what we have at the start of this novel is a young woman, um, I want to believe, I think she's like an ogre type woman, uh, race or, you know, how do you explain these things? Sometimes you're talking about romance novels and then all of a sudden you're in the world of sci-fi and fantasy and 
Yeah. So basically what happens is she has been raised her whole life to be sacrificed to a god in this sort of convent that she lives in. And one day a wizard shows up. He's sort of doing some research about something. And he, when she goes down into the tunnel to sacrifice herself, he is there and convinces her to run away. And she sort of be, is trained to be his personal assassin thereof after. This book is an epic fantasy. It would be impossible for me to tell you all the twists and turns. Um, the, the wizard that she goes along with has been kicked out of his city by another wizard. The first part of the book is their whole adventure to try to take the city back. And then he is looking for a specific object. And that becomes sort of the tale of the second half of the book. There's a ton of interesting characters. There's queer romance. There is fighting. There is world building. There are gods. There is magic. There is every thing you need to be lost in a phenomenal epic fantasy. I cannot wait for book two. And that's The Unspoken Name by A.K. Larkwood out now from Tor Books. Really, really, really good. Okay, so going back to a book that's sort of along the lines of um, uh, The Keeper of Lost Things. It's just a book that is just, by the end of it, you will feel such a great hug for your heart, sort of my phrase. That's what I like at the summer, and that is The Logger Queen of Minnesota by J. Ryan Stradal. And this is out now from Viking, which uh, under the imprim imprint Pamela Dorman books. Now, this is the story of two sisters. They live on this farm with their parents, and uh, one sister gets married and moves away. The other sister winds up actually going to college and sort of leaving the family behind. What happens is the parents of uh, the parents get sick. Um, one, the sister who is single sort of returns home with her husband and she has a degree in beer making. She decides that she wants to be a person who um, creates and makes new beer. And what happens is when the father passes away, he winds up leaving his entire farm to this one daughter and the other daughter who took care of the parents for a long time um and did a lot of really important stuff really winds up with nothing and really needs really the finances of the farm and so the sisters go in different directions and one of the other characters in the book is the granddaughter of um, the woman who uh, doesn't get the farm. And she also becomes fascinated with beer making. And she sort of creates her own sort of path in life. And what we have is we have these families, these different pockets of this family, the sort of family drama that's going on. But we have these independent women sort of making their ways in the world. What are they going to do? How are they going to do it? Um, uh, I wish I, I'm so bad with names and it's been a while. So let me see what I can do. So Helen is the younger daughter. She is, um, no, Helen. Helen is the daughter and the sister who winds up being the bear maker. She winds up marrying into a family that sort of has this, um, this, company and they wind up taking the farm that her father leaves her and creating and becoming very, very wealthy because of this beer. And then Edith is the other daughter. She struggles to get by. She's married. She's very, very good at making pies. And then we have the young um, granddaughter who also winds up, she joins and she becomes a member of another brewery and she learns how to make beer and then goes on to do some really amazing things. And it's how all of these stories wind up coming together. I don't know that I sold this book as well as I wanted to, but I really loved it. Um, it is just one of those things where I loved the stories of these women, I loved how well-rounded they were. I loved sort of being with them through all of their struggles and strifes. And I also just really loved the ending. It just made me feel good. Um, yeah, so I hope that did a justice. Um, so I'm really sorry that I just sort of gushed about it and yeah. It's so good. So that's The Logger Queen of Minnesota by J. Ryan Straddle. This is out now, again, from Pamela Dornbin Books, out from Viking. Last but not least is um, All Adults Here by Emma Straub. Now, I really, really liked this book, but I love myself a good, old-fashioned family 
drama. So we have the matriarch of the family, Astrid. One day she gets out of her car and she sees a woman she doesn't truly care for get hit and killed by a bus. In that instant, Astrid decides that maybe it's time for her to live her life differently. She has been in a relationship for some time that she's been keeping secret. I'm not going to spoil it because it's a good part of the book. She has three children, all doing very different things, leading very different lives that are sort of all separated, sort of like the glue that holds this family together has become very loose over time. And what happens is this instance sort of brings all this together. Also, another factor is her granddaughter. Gosh, there's a lot of granddaughters. I like a good grandma granddaughter story. You guys know I do a grandpa grandson too, because you know I'm so close to my grandma. Um, her granddaughter has been involved in an incident in school and comes to live with her for a year to start over anew as well. And it is a lot about how she comes to town and she meets a, um, a friend, makes a new friendship, sort of helps that relationship and that person blossom as well. I'm trying not to spoil because there's a lot of stuff in this book that is just so charming as you read it. But what really this book it is, is, is about a family to sort of come apart that starts to come back together and sorts and starts to really support each other once again. Um, I loved it. I thought it was heartwarming. I thought it was funny. I thought it was charming. And I just, by the end of it, was rooting for the entire family. And I really loved it. So that's All Adults Here by Emma Stroud. This is out now from Riverhead Books. So let me see if I can get these all in one stack for you. I have to apologize again because I don't think I did an amazing job raving enough about The Logger Queen of Minnesota, and it's definitely worth your time. All of these books would be fantastic ways to end your summer reading. So please, please pick up one, pick up two, pick up six, however many you want to pick up. I hope you read them all. As always, I totally appreciate it. If you are a return subscriber, you know I could not do this without you. If you are new to my channel, thank you so much. Please subscribe, stick around. I do like to talk about books. As always, as always, I wish you guys to shop locally, read globally, and until next time, I wish you very, very happy reading. Bye!